Hey Russell fam, in today's video, we are gonna do, do a lesson with us video, my second grade language arts curriculum. Be back in just a second. Hi, my name is Becky and welcome to our Russell's Loving Life YouTube channel. Here on this channel, we talk about homeschooling, homemaking, and everything in between. I am a homeschooling mom of two and I have been homeschooling since 2012. We also have a blog, which is russellslovinglife.com. Make sure to check that out. There, I give you tips and tricks and things that I have learned through my years of homeschooling. If you are new to this channel, please consider subscribing and clicking that little bell notification down at the bottom. That just lets you know every time we upload a new video. And if you are a returning Russell fam, we are so glad you are back. In today's video, you are going to get to see us do a lesson with my Soaring with Spelling, Growing with Grammar, and Winning with Writing for my second grade language arts curriculum. I taught this last year to both of my children and loved it. I wanted to show you an in-depth look of what each curriculum looks like when you're doing a lesson. So let's turn this camera around and get started. All right, with Soaring with Spelling Level 2, you get the workbook and you get the answer sheet here. And it is designed for five lessons per week. And let me show you the table of contents, what each lesson is talking about. And there again, this is a 36 week program with a lesson for every day of the week. Okay, and what you do on day one, here are all of the words and the definitions, which I love, love, love. So they're not just learning spelling, they're also learning the definitions in here. So on day one of every single week, you go over the words and what you do is you take a practice test and typically what i do is the words that are missed on the practice test i make them write them five times each and that is what we do on day one and then over here on day two there's just a worksheet you do and we go over the words i call them out they spell them aloud And that's all you do on day two. Day three, short little lessons here. Day four. See, it's telling you to write a definition. And then day five is your spelling test that is used on here. And then you have lesson two, day one. And every week it's the same thing. You do the first lesson, which is the exact same. The lessons um, two, three, and four change up a little bit, but days one and five are always the same. And then we get to lesson six. So we do five lessons and then we get to a review. And then here you are on your review. And so you do a review for the entire week. Lesson two, lesson three, or day two, three, and then five. Um, you can do a spelling test on day five if you want to for the reviews. Um, if they're having trouble with certain words, that's up, up to you completely. And then you start a whole new five lessons and then you'll have another review. And over here on the answer key, it tells you the answers for each lesson. 
And it also gives you the words for the week so you can, so here, lesson one, here is all the words for the week. So you can call them out to them without having to look in their workbook. And then here's the answers for the lessons. Very easy, simple program. I love it. Make sure to be watching out for do a lesson with us videos and I will show you how I use this. And then we're over here to our review. That was the flip through of Soaring with Spelling. All right, today is a Monday, so we are doing lesson five, day one. This is the pretest. What we typically do is we go over the words. I let her read the words. If she mispronounces them, I help her. Then we read the definitions. And then on day one, you take the pretest. So what you do is you turn it over. This is not graded by any means. And so what you do is you call out all of the words to them. And if they get them wrong, then you make them write them over here. And what I do is on a separate sheet of paper, if they miss them, um, I also do this with my seventh grader because he's using the same one. They have to write them three times each. And so you take your answer key and you use that to call out the words since they have the book. And the carryover words are right here, and this is any words that they missed the previous week. And she met 100 on last week's test, so there are no carryover words, but you can carry them over and use them for the next week to help them learn to spell the words correctly. So I'm gonna give her this pretest, and I'll be back in just a second. All right, she has taken the pretest. She got all of the words correct. So we are done with lesson one for the day. And so that's all you do for spelling. This will be tomorrow's lesson that she will do. So short and sweet, that's all for spelling. Now we're gonna move on to writing. Okay, the winning with writing level two curriculum comes with the answer key. This is your first and second semester. And then you have your workbook right here. And I love it because it is broken down like this. There's 36 weeks and there is a lesson for each day. So we do a five day or we do a four day school week. So we will double up on a lesson during the week and that is very helpful but I love it because it breaks it down and doesn't do a whole lot of work in one day. It just spreads it out all throughout the week. So let's flip through this. Here is the table of contents. If you wanna see everything that is taught in here. So for lesson one, we're going to be doing uh, sentences. Lesson two, making sentences more interesting. Lesson three, uh, fixing sentence run-ons. Lesson four, correcting, uh, correcting wordy sentences. Lesson five, uh, correcting choppy sentences. And then it comes back to lesson six, which is a review, which I love so much that my children benefit so much from the spiral effect. Um, we don't necessarily do the mastery and you move on. Every curriculum we have has the spiral approach and I love it. So then you get down here to lesson six and then it tells you that you're gonna review lesson one through five. So I'm just gonna show you the first six lessons that are in here. So you can just see what this curriculum is all about. Okay, so lesson one is the entire week. 
So you'll have lesson one, day one. So on lesson one, we are working on sentences for an entire week. And it gives you some reading information here. And then you turn over here and then you answer some questions. And that is all you do for lesson one, day one. Here's lesson one, day two. We're still working on sentences. It just goes a little more in depth. And then you're over here on lesson one, day three. Not very long lessons at all. So nothing to, this is uh, day four lesson. Nothing to take a lot of time, nothing to get frustrated with, with your second graders. And here is lesson one, day five. And this was the last lesson of the week. So you see how I can do two lessons in a day. And I usually try to look and see which one are the shortest ones and combine them, which works well for us. So here is lesson two, where we're making sentences more interesting. Same thing, reading and doing some work. There's lesson two, day two, lesson two, day three, lesson two, day four, lesson two, day five. So we're at the end of the week. And then we start a completely less new lesson, which is fixing run on sentences. And there's lesson three, day two. Lesson three, day three. Lesson three, day four. Lesson three, day five. And then we're starting over here, lesson four, day one. So there's reading, worksheets. Then here we're correcting wordy sentences. All right, and there's lesson four, day five. Now we're on lesson five, day one, correcting choppy sentences. Lesson two, day two. Lesson five, day three. Lesson five, day four. Lesson five, day five. And then we're over here on our review, which I was trying to get to. So this is the complete review of all of the lessons one through five. So here's day one that they're working on the review. And there's more review. So once you get to the review, if your child's having trouble, you can always go back and rework and redo some of the stuff they've worked on. And then you start a whole new lesson and we're going to verbs over here. So with the, oops, here is the teacher's manual or the answers. So pretty much it just tells you lesson one sentences, lesson one, day one, here's your answers. And there's the answers for all of the stuff they are working on. Last year was my first year to teach winning with writing and I loved it. So I started it with Becca this year. And there you go, lesson six. If you have any questions about this curriculum, just drop them in the comments. So writing, we are on lesson four, day one. I'm gonna read this lesson to her. or she's gonna read it, whichever. And then all we do is answer some questions 
that we are reading here. So, correcting wordy sentences. Okay, it talks about here the last lesson we were talking about run on sentences. So, I'm going to read this out and then I'll be back once we get into the actual lesson questions. All right, here's the example that they're giving us. Here is an example of a wordy sentence. Travis likes to go fishing. He likes to watch stars at night, but sometimes he likes to read a good book. Here it says, you can see how there are three separate thoughts in one sentence. One, Travis likes to go fishing. Two, he likes to watch the stars at night. And three, but sometimes he likes to read a good book. Here is how you correct this sentence. Travis likes to go fishing, period. He likes to watch stars at night, comma, but sometimes he likes to read a good book. Remember last time or the last lesson we were talking about adding and or but with a comma? Okay. All right. So you can see how wordy sentences was corrected by adding a period after the first complete thought and then adding a comma before the word but to separate the second and third thought. All right, so now that we've read that, we're going to come over here and it says below are several sentences. Write an example, or sorry, write an X next to each sentence that is a wordy sentence. All right, there are five of them on here. So we're going to do these. All right. I do not like getting up, bless you, but I do like eating breakfast. I like getting ready for the day. Is that a wordy sentence? It is? Okay. So what are you going to put next to it? Put an X next to one. Okay. All right. Because what we would say here to fix it is I do not like getting up, comma, but I like to eat breakfast, period. I like getting ready for the day. That would be how we would fix that one. Okay. The next one is my family plays games together and I usually win. Is that a wordy sentence? Yes or no? Yes, ma'am. Or no, ma'am. It's not a wordy sentence. The reason it's not is because it has the comma and right there. Remember? That's how we were fixing them. Because you could do it as two different sentences. My family plays games together. I usually win. But instead of having two different sentences, we just did it as comma and. All right. I try to climb the monkey bars, but I fell today. I will try to swing high on the swings. Is that a, run, a wordy? Yeah. All right. I like to watch movies, but some movies are boring. I do not like those. Is that a wordy sentence? All right, they're confusing you. That one is a wordy sentence. They have the comma but right here, but it needs to be a period so you don't have this one. I like to watch movies, comma, but some movies are boring. That should be a period. I do not like those. So it can be tricky. All right, this is your first day doing it. We're going to work on it all week. My room is dirty and I need to pick up my toys. Is that one wordy? That one is not wordy, correct. So you don't put an X there. All right. So that is our do a lesson with us for our winning with writing. We've already done our soaring with spelling. So now we're going to do our growing with grammar. Growing with grammar level two comes with a workbook, an answer key, and a test packet. And what I typically do is I do three hole punch in here and I put it in a binder or some form of notebook so I can keep up with it. But it tells you when to do the test on here. Use after lesson six. That's test one. And then it tells you all of that. And the answers to all of the tests. Oops. Here's the way to score the test if you're keeping grades which I do, and here are all the answers to the tests. 
and they are front and back. So in this less or this curriculum, you will have eight tests throughout the year. But it's much easier just to three hole punch it and keep it all together. And then so your answer key for your test is with your test packet, but your answer key for your workbook is right here. And so let's see. Here is what is covered in level in level two. You've got section one, which is sentences. And then section two is nouns, pronouns, prepositions. So there's a lot going on in section two. Then you get over here to section three, which is verbs. Section four is adjectives, adverbs, and writing. And then here's your reviews. And let's see, my book got flipped around on me, hang on. There we go. So a lesson one, these are not long lessons. I love this. You just read it and you do work sheets about it. And that is all lesson one right here. So typically you have two pages for each lesson. There's usually a lot of reading on the front and then a worksheet and then more work on the back and then you go to each lesson. So they're not very long, not a whole bunch of work to do. It's straight to the point and very easy. I used this last year with my first grader and loved it. So it doesn't tell you when you need to take the test in here. So you need to make sure you're following along. It told us to take a test after lesson six. So we're going to go to lesson six. And so here we are practicing subjects and predicates. And then it just keeps going. As they get um, up in levels, it gets a little more intense, a little deeper into it. It starts basic here and builds as you go through all of the levels. So this is all you get with lesson uh, level two, growing with grammar. And we are currently on our review here. So after this lesson today, She's going to have a test tomorrow because we're going to start another lesson. So here again, um, this is talking about sometimes the subject parts of two sentences can be joined into one sentence. Sometimes the predicate parts of two sentences can be joined into one. Join the predicate or subject parts of these sentences and write a new sentence. Remember to use the word and. Okay. So I know a lot of people ask questions about if these overlap and yes and no. The, this kind of focuses more on the actual sentence parts and things like that with the subject and predicates. And then over here with the writing, it's focusing more on run on sentences and those type things and doesn't focus as much on how to join them like this. So it does overlap a little bit, but not enough. It's short lessons and they go together perfectly. In my opinion, I have used them. This is my second year using it for sec uh, second grade. And this is my second year. Well, I taught it last year to my sixth grader and last year to my first grader. So I have taught those. So now, we are going to work on these and we'll be back. 
All right, here's our first sentence. Manny ate pancakes, Manny drank juice. So how do we make that into one sentence using the word and? Manny ate pancakes and drank juice. Correct, Manny ate pancakes and drank juice. So that's the correct answer. So she's gonna write this and we'll do the rest. Okay, she's finished this part, so we're gonna turn over and do the back side of the page. And now it says, draw a line from the subject part on the left to the predicate part on the right. And she's gonna do that all the way down. All right, the flowers and trees, the pony, the clown, juggled or laughed. What goes with juggled or laughed? The clown. The clown, so draw a line, there you go. All right, swayed in the wind, eats apples and runs fast. There you go. All right, so we're gonna finish the rest of these. All right, so she has finished all of this. So that is all of our language arts that we are using. It's growing with grammar, winning with writing, and soaring with spelling. I hope this video was helpful in seeing what I'm using for my second grade language arts. If you have any questions, drop them down in the comments. I will be more than happy to answer any question that I can. As always, remember to be kind, be careful, be considerate, and have a great day. Bye.